Well, just uh, getting everything sorted to reassemble the, uh, the cross slide for the the, the cross slide feed screw. Um, I think what I'm going to do is make up a blank, um, get that dimension sorted, get that as a blank for gear turning and that ready. Um, this one's definitely had somebody messing with it. The um, well, you can see, but the end, end of the uh, the shaft has been sheared off at some stage. By the looks of it, um, it's machined with a keyway, which I think is original Holbrook. Although I would have expected wood roof, but uh, uh, um, but the handle has been had a grub screw fitted, and then I don't think you can see the. It's had some blunt force trauma, so I suspect that at some stage. Uh, and the original handles have got bust off and I also suspect that the original handle would have been keyed or um, well keyed basically I might be wrong anyway um, I've had to redress all around this um, slotted area for the simple reason nothing had slide on and it took a good knock to take them off with brass hammer um, having done that I've come to the conclusion it'll uh, be time well spent but if you look at the uh, profile of that thread pretty skinny versus uh, right, let's show you the uh, bring it back in a sec you compare the thickness of the uh, the web of the thread there versus there that's quite a bit of movement there's no backlashes oh no there's a bit probably five or six thou there um, but when I add that off there's not a lot of thread left in it so I think it'd be timely to uh, make up a new one uh, my next dilemma is working out what um, gear that is gear type so I'll have to do some mention dimensions and measure it all up uh, meanwhile I'm uh, having a sort out uh, I've got a few bits of my Land Rover being painted up ready to go back on um, so I'm just kind of not killing time but getting stuff out of the way and set not a massive depth of cut I think it's a uh, 20 tile but it's quite a slow feed but not the chips right. that's what we're gonna go down to A bit of a chip guard in there because as you can see it's starting to string. We'll up the feed a bit. Left the speed RPM where it is. And the chip deflectors doing it, doing its bit. Not a very fast feed. We'll go up again a bit more on the next pass. Well, basically, I've just relieved that centre section there. 
Um, I'll probably give it another couple of goes over. And then I think we're good to go. It was a bit heavy handed with the ink, but uh, I would say that was a medium ink coating. Um, but you can see it's, it's evened it all out on the ends. Um, I'll go over tomorrow and put some pockets in it and uh, probably call that bit done. Um, it needs a coat of paint and I've also got to scrape the gib that fits on the underside of the dovetail of the yeah for the dovetail for the tape for the taper turning slide see if you remember that's where the uh, cross slide goes in and there's a, a dovetail here and that that allows the whole of the cross slide to move backwards and forwards following the taper turning attachment uh, and then there's another set of uh, dovetails on the uh, cross slide popper uh, so yeah, we've got to fit those up. Um, we know when we originally scraped these V-ways and set it up and we che checked it for being as near as damn it square to the axes of the spindle, that all worked out all right. So I haven't got to recheck that. Um, not until I actually start fitting the dovetail to the cross slide proper. Uh, so yeah, that's... Uh, Quick went quicker than I thought. I must have been much much more um, attentive when I roughed that one in. So it's only uh, what about an hour and a half to bring that down now. So we've got the saddle mounted on to the apron. Uh, we've wound it backwards and forwards, and for all intents and purposes, it seems fine. Um, there's no tightness anywhere. I can hear and feel a little bit of backlash between uh, the, the saddle gear and the um, rack. Now, the only adjustment I've done thus far is the four fixings on the gearbox and the two fixings on there. They're just in the holes. They, are, they haven't got the dowel pins to, to set the alignment. So that they've dropped by the amount that the clearance hole. So it's about 10 or maybe 15 thou. Which is about what I think the misalignment will be. Because it's what I've took off the surface. Uh, anyway, <coughs> we've dropped cod. <laughs> we've mounted that the wrong. The tube. That tube should be the other way around. So I've got to remove this end. Uh, take it off, feed it back on and put it back on. Um, don't know how I've done that but... There's only me doing it. So yeah, um, quite encouraging so far. What is amazed, I'm amazed about is all of that saddle, uh, sorry, all of that apron assembly hangs on the saddle with two Philister bolts, uh, screws. They are, I think the five, uh, they're half inch. I mean, they're, they're a good length, but that's it. No other fixings couple of location dowels one two and that's it these two fixings hold um, plates that run underneath there so we're gonna or I'll have to do some some fettling on that because obviously the gap that they've now got is 20 thou bigger or 15 thou bigger so yeah so I'm gonna spin that round um, refit that on so it's right and then I just want to convince myself that I haven't got to do any more adjustments before I then uh, drill the dowel holes the next size up and put new dowels in and if that's all I have to do to sort the alignment out I'm a happy bunny um, ha the, I haven't checked the fit of the cross slide onto that because it's in the post away which was uh, probably my error I should have uh, waited a week but uh, well, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, time for a cup of tea. Right, I just want to improve the engagement on the rack. So I am dropping the rack down by uh, approximately a further 10 thou. So there was already a, something in the region of about 8 thou drop. And I have now uh, necked in the top of the screw. 
and the head and just basically took 10 thou off diameter and uh, I'll fit that one in you can see the little hole where the dowel is I haven't fitted any dowels obviously because they won't line up now but I'm going to fit the screw um, pack the, the pack it up so that it's uh, sitting as low as it can and then see how it feels uh, I've marked what the backlash is so I'll see what it's like when I've got this on bring you back in a bit. so I've uh, <coughs> drilled out the um, dowel holes they were 3 eighths and they're now 13 30 second and I've fitted on the little tiny dowels which I've put a, a quarter inch thread in the end and I can fit them with a and pull them out without actually taking the whole bracket off now so so that end's done and I've just started on the, the gearbox and that is really tight so I'm just reaming the hole down there there's only two there's one at the top and there's another one down there I've had to make an extension for the drill because it just you know <laughs> so a 10 minute job's turned into I think we're currently running at three hours um, so there we go so that's just the uh, drill extension when I measured up the uh, the shank of the uh, drill bit and the nearest size under for the Remo which was 13 30 seconds was a, a 10 mil diameter when I measured the shank of the 10 mil drill it was 9.84 I think so I ended up boring it with a single bit tool uh, so that's a lovely sliding fit and a couple of set screws to hold it in and uh, it did the job so that got me out of that end um, I decided to fit you can see there it's got a um, quarter inch thread in the end the reason being in my experience whenever I drill out for a dowel pin I get the dowel pin almost seated it and it just seems to go very stiff um, I've concluded that I'm not drilling the holes deep enough to then send the reamer down further than it needs to because of the tapered um, tip of the feeder of the reamer so um, made a little just a, just from some scrap bits just a tiny little tapping hammer sliding hammer so I could put it in and take it out until I got the depth sorted out because I kid you not the bed of that drilling it um, it's really bloody hard work I don't know whether you remember an earlier video where we were drilling out the feet for the jacking screws same thing uh, it took the took the edge off every tool I used um, so yeah so uh, as things stand saddles on aprons on uh, we've got a nice easy and that's no effort at all and it's nice and easy all the way along Now I can I can feel the gear is in it, um, but when you think I think there's one, two, three, four, and then onto the rack. So there's quite a lot, quite a gear train in that. I haven't yet done the pinned the rack. Uh, I've oversized the holes and cut the shanks down a little bit, but I've got two pins to fit. And I'm just waiting because they, I can do them anytime, but uh, I'm just I want to be 100% sure before I uh, pin that So the two cross slides there's the blank which needed gear cutting and then the original which has got the very worn thread um, They're on the way back to me now the blank having been gear cut and I shall put a link at the bottom of uh, probably the next video um, showing it the process he uses because it's uh, quite impressive um, it's all um, what do you call it? Numerically controlled with um, uh, it, it, encoders which split up a revolution into, I don't know, 3,600 3, and 7,200 and all sorts of different numbers. But they split it up so that you've got a very accurate rotational uh, count. And then he links that through to a drive driving the um, rotary table 
or rotary head which is indexing the thing round as it's being hobbed fascinating used to do that sort of thing or used to have a guy that did did the uh, the workings out and made it work and i used to come up with the ideas with him um in my former working life but uh, i never got into the electronic side of it uh so yeah that's where we're at, at the moment uh i've got a bit of a job on now cars uh, I've got to clear out my wood turning lathe and make up some handles for uh, a gentleman. So we'll be doing that for the next couple of hours and uh, have a good tidy up.